approach really is kind of been evolutionary. We, we kind of think that there's a future in, in games that, as a kind of new medium that's going to be as important in, in this century as, as films were in the last century. When we started out, we made a lot of decisions to try and do what we thought would be the future of games. One of the things we, we tried to not do is what we call screen litter. And that's just lots of things on the screen that take you out of the game. So we figured if you watch a movie and someone gets hurt, then you know they get hurt because you see them get shot. When someone's hurt, when they've you know, been shot in the arm, then they can hold their wound. One of the nice things and a very brave thing I think we've done is that we have no real map. We use the car, which is your main focus of attention when you're driving, and we use indicators on that to tell you to go left, to go right. It doesn't tell you which road to go down, so you're not really being that restricted. London's quite a big place, it's got a lot of roads in there, you can go wherever road you want. into every single car in the game. And every vehicle you can see, if you can stop it, you can get in that car. So you can drive things like buses, ambulances, anything really. But anything you can see, you can drive. Ow. And we've got, you know, true oversteer and true understeer in this game. The most cars will oversteer like the movies, like big American movies where they, the, the rear end goes out and they're hanging out around the corner. But cars, when they understeer, they actually steer less when you when you lift off the front also. We have that with a lot of European cars and front-wheel drive. We have a very accurate um, damage model for the game. Basically, no two crashes are the same because we calculate the damage um, in real time. And it allows us to have about 25 different properties for the cars. But one of the nice things is that these things uh, deteriorate through the game. So if you are driving like a maniac and you crash into a lot of things, your handling will deteriorate. The engine goes up in smoke, it, um, all the windows in the car smash as well. Just to, uh, you know, we just try to be as realistic as possible in that department. things we wanted to try and avoid is that you need to press every button to do the moves in the game. And that's because we want to get to a movie audience as well. We want people who, who watch movies but might not play the game to just pick it up and give it a go. So we have two controls. This is one for driving and then we have the game controls which you can see the character around using one analog stick. So if you're next to a wall, you'll go into stealth. In stealth you can group along the wall and as you get to reach the end of the wall, rather than having another key press to do some lean out maneuver, we just push right on the stick and the guy will lean out. You can do a lean out, then a shoot, a lean out, and a roll. Just by doing very sort of simple key presses. I think very early on we made a conscious decision to keep the weaponry as real as possible, as real as it is in London. So we, we don't have things like flamethrowers or grenade launchers. When you start off, you start off with block automatic pistols and they have 21 shot clips. And generally throughout, guys the cops or the villains carry those guns. But sometimes you can pick up shotguns and shotguns got five shots in the clips. If you pick up an AK-47, it's got 32 rounds. the player wants to pick up a shotgun, say, when he's already carrying two pistols, he has to host for these pistols before picking up some of the bigger weapons. And you don't have to go to a menu and then select, you know, what sort of gun. If there's a big gun there on the ground and you run past it, he'll bend down and pick it up. We have quite a nice little system for the AI. It's pretty free roaming. It's allowed to travel anywhere on the map basically. So if you're in a location, you interact with some AI and he's after you and you leg it, he'll follow you. He finds a point of cover and you're attacking him, he'll duck. I think that gives you a nice sort of feel. The AI has hierarchy, so they have different grades of baddies. If you take a lowly thug hostage, they probably won't have much of an effect. If you take a sergeant major in the equivalent thing, we'll call for a priority. Feel below his level will 
think twice before they shoot you rather than just storming in. They'll get defensive, they'll try not shooting you, and then take that go, guys. But it's quite nice to learn on how the, the missions play out.